The SpaceX Starship is a mammoth, clocking in at a whopping 120 meters in height with a weight of 5,000 tons when holding a max payload, it is objectively huge. According to SpaceX CEO Elon Musk's 2016 Starship proposal, the vehicle will carry upwards of 100 people per flight, with eventual plans to carry up to 200 people. That's incredible, especially considering that a capacity of 200 people puts Starship on par with what some Amtrak trains can carry. Of course, that's a unique comparison, but it's an accurate one. While Starship is not yet in its final form, the ship is nonetheless about the same size it'll be when fully completed. But what exactly does SpaceX plan to do with all the space? I mean, you can throw some satellites in there for a few Starlink launches or sell some space to companies, but what about people? What can Starship pack in for the 100 to 200 people SpaceX plans to inevitably bring on board? That's what we're here to find out. So, without further ado, Today, we will be uncovering the layout of Starship interiors needed to support life. On Starship's official user's guide, SpaceX mentions that the crew configuration of Starship includes private cabins, large common areas, centralized storage, solar storm shelters, and a viewing gallery. Out of that small section alone, there's quite a bit of helpful information. Most importantly, SpaceX will have a dedicated crew configuration of Starship, that means that things can be much crazier than previously anticipated. For example, think about storing 100 people aboard a spaceship where everything is built for people versus where half the space is packed with commercial items. I mean, the payload volume alone is a whopping 1,100 cubic meters. The passenger interior volume for a Boeing 747-400 is 876 cubic meters, with 450 seats. While to many at first, it might have seemed ridiculous to suggest that Starship could take between 100 and 200 people to space, it's much easier to see how easily this could be accomplished. But of course, that also includes SpaceX's mini laundry list of various rooms and configuration changes, starting with private cabins. Again, private cabins seemed like a no-go for a ship like Starship at first, especially considering the closest we've ever gotten is SpaceX's Dragon 2 capsule. Even then, a Dragon 2 only contains 9.3 cubic meters of pressurized volume, or a minuscule 0.85% of Starship's total capacity. So if we're looking at about 50 to 75 private cabins with 2 to 3 people in each, i.e. 100 to 225 people, even with the total capacity of a Dragon 2 capsule at 9.3 cubic meters, Starship would use just 465 to 700 cubic meters of its payload volume. So that's 42 to 64% of just Starship's pressurized payload volume. And that leaves 36 to 58% of the rest of the volume for open spaces, additional shelters, bathrooms, storage, life support, and more. A lot isn't necessarily accounted for when talking about cabin space, and these are definitely included. Bathrooms are obviously a necessity. If you're going to be in space for weeks, you're not waiting until you touch down to use the restroom. So, whether there are communal bathrooms in halls or individually placed room bathrooms, we don't know. However, we know that they'd all have to be interconnected and flow to waste management and water reclamation centers, where water could be filtered and reused and waste disposed of. Additionally, Musk would have to include sufficient food within Starship storage. Again, would this be in the form of a central food bank or cafeteria? Or would everyone receive rations for their time on Starship? With the amount of space left unoccupied by private cabins, it could go either way. Speaking of which, let's take a look at how general life support could work, or even fit, in a starship. After all, you can't dedicate 100% of the ship's pressurized volume to living quarters. Luckily, this problem is something that SpaceX has looked into for quite a while. So while many people overlook life support entirely until they rush something rudimentary, SpaceX is already on it. As a matter of fact, the company was attempting to hire Starship medical engineers months ago, as shown in a June 4th Twitter post by user Toby Lee. In this tweet, there were images shown of two job listings, a Starship medical engineer and a radiation effects engineer. For the former, SpaceX described developing operations, medical systems, protocols, and technology constructed for use aboard Starship. As for the radiation effects engineer listing, the company described a position with analysis, design, and testing of several systems designed to prevent varying radiation levels. SpaceX also mentioned working alongside other developmental teams to integrate protection and the like. 
While both of these posts have nothing explicitly mentioned about Starship's interior, they're both incredibly revealing. The biggest thing to take away from this is that SpaceX is currently heavily invested in building the best life support systems aboard Starship. Life support will likely be the most prominent use of pressurized space, excluding rooms and the like. Think air regulation, water, oxygen supply, waste disposal, temperature control, pressure regulation, and even food supplies and rations. There's a lot involved in what's generally considered to be locked to breathing. Of course, life support is much more complicated than this, with hundreds if not thousands of individual aspects and small items connecting to keep all of the crew alive. It'll also draw an incredible amount of power, meaning that even more of the usable space aboard Starship will likely be limited to the essentials. After all, along with the human necessities, Starship will provide an entirely pressurized volume, top-of-the-line waste disposal, water purification, and much more. As such, this is likely going to be a massive use of the vehicle's total volume. However, while spacecraft usually rely on refillable oxygen tanks, which are pressurized to contain high levels of breathable air, there is a growing case to use oxygen generation on board. Since Starship will deal with hundreds of people living in open spaces for weeks, if not months at a time, there's going to be a lot of spent air. In addition, the average human consumes 660 liters of oxygen a day, meaning that SpaceX would need a massive amount of onboard oxygen or a large generator. Luckily, the technology behind the ISS's oxygen generation is relatively miniaturized and easily usable. Through a process known as electrolysis, which splits water into hydrogen and oxygen, the space station has been producing oxygen for years. Fortunately, this process would also help Starship cover a few other support tasks, such as reclamation, waste disposal, and even fuel management. In addition, by combining the newly gained hydrogen with the carbon dioxide given off by every crewmate, astronauts can create water and methane. Obviously, this water can be purified and used for human consumption, with the methane potentially going towards Starship's methalox supply. But of course, this process isn't perfect. There's still a relatively large gap between usage and generation, meaning that SpaceX would still have to dedicate part of its onboard volume to oxygen, water, and other containers of the like. However, that would likely be stored within Starship's centralized storage, or a specific area locked off to the general crew. The centralized storage could be used for personal belongings, additional oxygen supplies, water sources, and literally anything SpaceX would want on board. It would also likely serve as a central area for the onboard crewmates, with several common areas to choose from. These common areas are likely set up similarly to a cruise ship, which frequently contains multiple neighborhoods. While that's not necessarily a standard comparison, it would make sense. Cruise ships are also huge, include similar life support systems, excluding oxygen production, hold limited space, and much more. Both would contain private cabins, large common areas, potential shelters, and public viewing galleries. Plus, they're both temporarily self-sufficient craft with limited space to work with. That's why Starship will likely have large rooms interconnected with smaller neighborhoods with common areas. Like a cruise ship, there would be a few levels reserved for electrolysis, oxygen supplies, and water supplies. It's honestly quite strange that this many comparisons between Starship and a cruise ship can be made, although I guess they both share the word ship. However, they're both shining examples of what humans can do with limited space and unlimited needs. Luckily, Starship has more than enough space for virtually anything it needs. Private cabins? Check. Common areas? Check. Centralized storage? Check. How about solar storm shelters and viewing galleries? They're likely also going to be an easy fit aboard Starship. After all, you could likely use a future deck or level of Starship rooms as a massive shelter, and another for a viewing gallery. But of course, the same concept would apply to virtually anything else that would be included. If Starship could pull off this kind of modularity or compartment method, SpaceX would be able to swap out and replace anything they'd want to. Levels of private cabins could be rearranged, extra functions like a zero-gravity sports court could be added, a theater floor could be included. It doesn't matter, the possibilities would be endless. Nonetheless, we'll have to see a sort of proof of concept first. Then, SpaceX would have to pull out all the designing and engineering stops to do all this and keep everyone on board alive. And as such, what do you all think? Will SpaceX take the modular route or just stuff the payload area with rooms? 
Do you think they'll eventually find a way to turn a trip into an experience with onboard entertainment or have barely enough space for basics and the incredibly complicated life support systems required? Let us know in the comments section below and definitely come back for more future space uploads every week.